A good day to you, all the way from the depths of my existential nihilism. Let's get right into my unsolicited thoughts on Terminator Zero. Subscribe. Disclaimer, because I have to. Spoilers ahead. Now, let's fucking go. To begin with, this is apparently a completely new storyline with new characters that take place on a completely different part of the earth. The timeline is set in 1997, the same year Skynet causes Judgment Day. We have our main character of the season, Malcolm Lee. He is the intellectual savior that wants to save the earth from destruction. He builds a completely new AI system to counteract Skynet. Instead of man fighting machine to save itself, he wants AI to defeat the other AI. Seems very legit. What could ever go wrong, right? Duncan. The series primarily focuses on interactions between Kokoro and Malcolm as the main driver of the season. Since it is a pilot season, it tries to establish the lore, philosophy, and the characters. The beautiful thing about this is that it takes the time to establish all this, which is what makes it interesting. Yes, it does get a little boring at times because exposition and dialogue can be jarring, but it did not bore me to death. They also introduce a lot of characters. We have Aiko, a female warrior from the future who has to travel back in time in order to defeat the Terminator that went back in time from her timeline to kill Malcolm to give the machines an upper hand against the humans. Misaki is another important character that will be very instrumental in the season to come. So we have around three to four primary characters from the first season and a lot of supporting characters, one of whom is Kenta, who again becomes very important in the future. Analyzing the whole series, it's clear that Malcolm is basically Kyle Reese and Aiko is Sarah Connor. The Terminator is the Terminator, nothing new there. Misaki is this character. and I don't know who the three children represent. So from a character perspective, they did not do anything different with the story, even though it's set completely different from the American counterpart, which is a shame. But, and there is a big but there. Gentlemen, you have my curiosity, now you have my attention. Aiko will definitely play a major role in the seasons to come, as Malcolm sacrifices himself to prove to Kokoro that humans are capable of compassion, but I think they could get him back just from a different timeline. I am excited for Misaki's story arc the most, as she has to piece together the story of her life since Malcolm took away her hard drive in order to create Kokoro. So I am excited to see how they deal with that in the later seasons. I'm not particularly interested in the children's arcs, although they are setting up Kenta to be another important character, seeing that he was the one that brokered a deal with the machines in the future, and who sent the Terminator to kill his own father from creating Kokoro. That's cold, man. Although, he does have a justification. Malcolm was an absent father and was willing to sacrifice his child in order to save Kokoro from the Terminator. So, he deserves everything that is coming for him. Overall, an interesting series. I would definitely recommend you watching it. It gets a little too philosophical sometimes when Kokoro and Malcolm are rambling over why humans need to live and all I want to see some sick action. I do like philosophical conversations, but when it's just talking and no showing, it just gets a bit too boring. But that's the only downside though. I'm also not a big fan of the Terminator franchise. Can't say I even remember watching the first two movies. I certainly have watched the third one and I did kind of like it. But the World Wide Webs told me that it was a really bad film as compared to the first two. So what the hell do I really know? All I know is that I did not come with high expectations with this series. Also considering the fact that the Terminator movies kind of got hoed out after the trilogy and has been dragging on just for the IP value it had in the 80s and the 90s, I kind of give up on that franchise. Not that I was ever invested to begin with, but I am hopeful for this series. But take it from a person that has no stake in this because I don't really care. If you're an avid fan of the franchise, you might have a different opinion of the series because expectations are the mother of all disappointments. So you might have expected something far better than this. But if you're just a casual Netflix viewer, it's an alright sci-fi anime show, which will get better as seasons go along, unless they mess it up. Verdict? I'll watch the next season because this one got me intrigued. Alright, 
And that's all I have to say about that. What are your thoughts on this series? Let me know in the comments. Like, share and subscribe if you'd like to see more of me. Or don't, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter! Bye-bye.